Now, I'm not one to gossip, but I will bring you the tea. Welcome to Chronicles Speaks. Please, please, I don't have any time for any gossip now. Mm -hmm. Eh? Yes. Look at you. Wendy, Wendy, Wendy. Isn't that how Whitney Houston said it? Wendy, I swear you are in need of an Olivia Pope on your team. I went back through the documents this morning, and according to the new documents uploaded today, Wendy is suing Wells Fargo for a whopping $75,000. Wendy, no! No, 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 no. Wendy is currently in a heated court battle with Wells Fargo and their disgruntled employee, Miss Lori Schiller, who claims Wendy is not of sound mind. The way they are playing with your life and halting your money and messing with your funds, $7 million for me off top. They got it. They make $75,000 alone off the of interest of your money while you're asleep. And most of us consumers don't even know it. If you don't know, Wendy is in a heated court battle with Wells Fargo Bank and Wendy can't touch her funds because of it. We're going to get into that and the new documents and more. But before we get into that, be sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss out on any of this tea. Now let's get back into it. Now as you all know, Choke No Joke broke the story last week that Wendy Williams was currently going through it with Wells Fargo due to them freezing all of her funds. Wendy isn't able to touch her funds to do anything. Pay bills, pay Kelvin, pay anybody. In short, Wendy was doing business with Wells Fargo. Within doing business with Wells Fargo, she had an account manager, someone pretty much letting her know where to place her funds to make extra money, things like that. Her account manager was Lori Schiller. Lori was not handling her funds correctly. In turn, Wendy fired her. They never said that Wendy got another account manager, but Wendy still did work with Wells Fargo and her money was still within Wells Fargo. Well, because Lori was disgruntled, she told Wells Fargo, this lady is not of sound mind. We heard that she has dementia. Don't let her have her money. Don't let any of her power of attorneys have her money. So they froze everything. Wendy can't look at her accounts online. She can't pull any money out. Wendy can't pay her mortgage, her employees, or anything else because of this disgruntled employee. Now, I told y'all they're currently requesting $75,000. I personally do not feel like that's enough. I'm not an attorney, so I don't know if that's all they can request. I hope with this being windy, they can request for more. But this case has currently been assigned to the commercial division, and they are requesting for judicial intervention addendum. Now, within this addendum, they're saying that there has been a breach of contract or fiduciary duty, fraud, misrepresentation, business tort, unfair competition, or statutory and or common law violation where the breach or violation is alleged to arise out of business dealings, and they're saying this is sales or assets or securities, corporate restructuring, partnerships, shareholders, joint ventures, and other business agreements, trade secrets, restrictive covenants, and employee agreements, not including claims that principally involve alleged discriminatory practices. Now, they also have checked off business transactions involving or arising out of dealings with commercial banks and other financial institutions, application to stay or compel arbitration and affirm or disaffirm arbitration arbitration awards and related injunctive relief pursuant to CPLR Article 75 involving any of the foregoing enumerated commercial issues without consideration of the monetary threshold. Now this is the money that Wendy's wanting. It says plaintiff petitioners claim for compensatory damages, exclusive of punitive damages, interest costs, and counsel fees claim $75,000. And I really had to say, okay, let me make sure I ain't missing no zero. No, that's really $75,000. Now with it saying exclusive of punitive damages, interest costs, and counsel fees claim, she can get more than that, but that's just the base of what she wants. Considering Wendy isn't a basic chick, I would basically be asking for more, but that's just me. But like I said, within that, that fee can go up, but that's just the base of what they're asking for. Now I'm gonna go over this new document that was uploaded today. We're not gonna read the whole thing because y'all had so much to say about me reading the whole thing before, but Wendy pretty much is affirming that she is the petitioner. She's of at least 18 years of age, and the reason why she she is claiming she's not getting her money. So let's get into this part. This request for relief arises from, among other things, Wells Fargo failure and refusal to reopen my personal business deferred compensation and investment accounts and unfreeze my financial assets, which has caused and is causing imminent and irreparable financial harm to myself, my family, and my business. For more than two weeks, Wells Fargo has repeatedly denied my request to access my financial assets, which total over several million dollars. I have submitted multiple written requests to Wells Fargo and I have visited various Wells Fargo branches in the South Florida area in effort to resolve this matter outside of the courtroom. 
to date, I have submitted and made over a dozen requests regarding the financial damages resulting from Wells Fargo's decision to unlawfully deny me access to my account. As a result of my inability to access my financial assets, I have defaulted and I am at risk of defaulting on several billing and financial obligations included but not limited to mortgage payments and employee payroll. In response to my request, Wells Fargo has informed me that their determination to deny me access to my account is based on the advisement of my former financial advisor, Lori Schiller, who alleged that I was of unsound mind. Despite my decision to terminate Schiller as a result of her improper conduct in relation to my accounts, Wells Fargo continues to deny me access to my financial assets and statements. As I'm in the process of auditing my current vendor and service contracts to ensure that all my personal and business relationships are in line with my current needs, it is essential that I have access to all of my financial property. It appears that Schiller was and is disgruntled by the decision for a potential change in direction and it saddens me that respondent and I have not been able to resolve this controversy amicably. Given the imminent and irreparable financial damage directly resulting from Wells Fargo's actions, I demanded that Wells Fargo reopen my personal business deferred compensation and investment accounts, unfreeze my financial assets, and allow me access to my bank statements immediately or else I would have no choice but to seek the court's intervention. Despite overtures that their in-house legal team would give a ruling after I provided them with properly executed witnessed and notarized power of attorney and signed letter of representation as requested. Wells Fargo has yet to advise me of their legal team's decision and has instead engaged Bresler, Amory, and Ross PC better known as Bresler, as their legal counsel regarding this dispute. Nonetheless, despite the urgency of curing this irreparable financial damage and a good faith effort to resolve this matter without the court's intervention, I advise my attorneys to wait until February 3rd, 2022, before filing the emergency petition with the court in order to allow Wells Fargo the opportunity to remedy this controversy without the need of judicial and or arbitrational intervention. However, Wells Fargo has still failed to reopen my accounts, unfreeze my assets, and allow me access to my financial statements and such failure has caused and is continuing to cause irreparable financial damages and financial hardship to me, my family, and my business. Lastly, Wendy says, until Wells Fargo reopens my personal business deferred compensation and investment accounts and freezes my financial assets, my family and I are at risk of suffering continued irreparable financial harm while enduring ongoing financial obligations. Accordingly, it is respectfully requested that the court issue an order for a preliminary injunction and temporary restraining order enjoining and restraining respondent and any of their agents, members, officers, and employees, representatives, and anyone else acting on respondents' behalf from freezing my personal business deferred compensation and investment accounts and interfering with my rights to access my financial assets and statements pending an arbitration together with such other relief as the court deems just and proper. In short, to me, it seems like Wells Fargo had every opportunity to give Wendy Williams her money, but because Ms. Shelley was disgruntled and egotistical, she did not want to back down. She was upset that Wendy got rid of her and she wanted to make her pay for so at first, they told Wendy Williams that they were unable to give her the money because she was of unsound mind. Then they told her that she needed a power of attorney. When she got that power of attorney, the documents had to be notarized, this, this, that, and the third. Wendy did everything that they asked of her, and they still would not give her the money. She tried on 12 different occasions to try to get her money. They still would not give it to her. So before filing that emergency petition, Wendy Williams said, I'm going to give y'all one more time to run me my money or else we got to go to court. They let it go. Wendy said, okay, February 3rd comes, we're going to court. And that's exactly what Wendy Williams did. They still have yet to give Wendy Williams her money and now they have found an attorney to handle the case for them. Why they are arguing with this lady, going back and forth with her on money that belongs to her, I don't get it, but I'm telling you, they would be paying me more than $75,000. The embarrassment alone, not being able to pay my mortgage, possibly ruining my credit, not being able to pay my ex-husband, y'all are doing too much. And now it's online. I would get online like Monique. Hey, my sweet babies, I need every one of you to go and boycott Wells Fargo. Let's go and find us a black bank because these white folks ain't treating us right. Wendy, I know you from Jersey, girl. You better let that side go ahead and come out. They playing with you, girl. Everybody is playing with you, and I don't know why. Anyway, what I need to do is hear from you. What do you guys think about everything going on with your girl, Wendy Williams? Leave a comment, and you know how we do. We'll talk about it down below. Talk to you guys later. Bye. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss out on any of this tea.